In this video, I want to go on to talk about the exercises of FDWK 3.4. And number one, we're trying to write the volume of a cube as a function of the side length s. And that's pretty straightforward. V is equal to s cubed. Second, we want to find the instantaneous rate of change of the volume V with respect to a side C, side S. Well, what do we mean by that? As the side, the length of a side increases, it produces a corresponding change in the volume of the cube. And so what we're looking for there is the rate of change of volume with respect to the sides. And so we would call that dV dS the change in volume that's brought about by a the expected change in volume that's brought about by a unit change in the side. And we can see by the calculator screen below that the rate at which the volume changes as the side changes is different for each value of s. So when we go from 1 to 2, we, went, we increased from 1 to 8. When we went from 2 to 3, though, we increased from 8 to 27. So the rate at which the volume changes as the side changes is different for each different length of the side. I hope that's clear. And we can quantify that by taking the derivative of volume with respect to side. And that would just be dv ds is equal to 3s squared. For part c, if we wanted to evaluate the rate of change of v at s equals 1 and s equals 5, at s equals 1, we would actually write it in this way. We can, uh, we can write it as v prime of 1. However, because the variable is, uh, is not clear from that, it's probably more clear to write it as dv ds with this long bar and then it's a little subscript at the bottom that says when s is equal to 1. The rate of change of volume with respect to side when the side length is 1 would just be 3 times 1 squared or 3. When we want to evaluate that at 5 and that would be 75. So you can kind of see that reflected in the table to the right there. Now the values as you go from 5 to 6 the increase is actually 91 but we're just taking the rate at which it's changing at the instant of t at, of s is equal to 5 there so it's slightly different than the average rate of change over that interval. And finally, if s is measured in inches and v is measured in cubic inches, what, would, what units would be appropriate for dv ds? And that would be inches cubed per inch. There would be a 3 cubic inch change in the velocity, in the, excuse me, in the volume of the cube expected when the length of the side increases by one inch. So it's three inches cubed per inch. And those would be our units. Okay, then for the second problem we have a similar thing. Only here we're looking to write the area of the circle as a function of its circumference. Well, if the area is pi r squared and the circumference is 2 pi r, we probably need to use the fact here that the diameter is 2 r, or pi d. And I take that back. I think we can simply use c equals 2 pi r and solve that for r. And so we get r is equal to c over 2 pi. Now we're going to plug that in for r in the area. And I won't go through the calculations, but that should be area as c squared over 4 pi. That's the area as a function of circumference. Next, for b, we want to find the instantaneous rate of change of the area a with respect to circumference. And so we would write da dc. And since 1 over 4 pi is a constant, we'll bring that out. This would be the constant multiple rule. Then we'll apply the power rule to c squared, and we'll get 2c. And we get that the rate of change of area with respect to circumference is c over 2 pi, which happens to be the radius. So there's important information there. Evaluating that when c is equal to pi, we get pi over 2 pi, which is a half. Evaluating that when that's 6 pi, when c is 6 pi, we get 6 pi over 2 pi, which is 3. The appropriate units would be the units of the area divided by the units of the circumference. And so that would be inches squared per inch again. Well, not again, because the example above was inches cubed per inch.